This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plan, celebrating 77 years of providing Tennesseans with high quality health coverage at affordable prices. Visit FBHP.com today to learn more about our history in Tennessee and to get a quote. That's FBHP.com. This is Amy Wells. My name is Mike Keith. And this, after a long wait, is LeJerry Sneed, the yes, newest. Tennessee Titan, welcome. You have been acquired. You are here. I am here. It is official. Yes, sir, it is. Mike, what? we cannot continue. We can't continue because you've had this twinkle in your eye looking at this outfit. It's since unbelievable. Since the minute he walked in. I feel we would be doing a disservice to the OT people if we didn't, A, acknowledge the suit. Fantastic. Because it's Definitely. Remarkable. And ask you about it. Did you design this? Did you have a... My suit guy, he, uh... He sent me fabrics. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he did. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go with this fabric right here because it goes right with the colors. Yeah. And yeah. he was like, yeah, let's go with this one. So you had it made? Yeah, I have it for, made. For this? Just, just for this For this day. day. I'll never wear it again. <laughs> really? Really. So it's that, is it because it's that momentous of a moment or because you don't really have any place else to wear a suit like that? Uh, I just think it's just the moment, you know? Just the day and the moment, you know? The accomplishments. He has it's a, a very suit special guy. suit. He's got a suit guy. Yeah. That's pretty Well, you cool. know he has style. I mean, we've seen him play. We get that. Well, yeah, but you, it seems like this is very flashy. This is very, I mean, magnificent. <laughs> is this always your style, fashion-wise? Uh, yeah, I say Sundays, uh, home games, I try to be chill a little. Yeah. But when I go away, I like to put, like, nice stuff on, nice suits. I wear suits every away game, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a suit guy. You're a suit guy? I'm a suit guy. Why? Because it's clean, it's fresh? I think it's clean and fresh and it's made me look more professional, you know? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So what about your style on the field? Talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'm a totally different guy on the field. Really? Yeah. I'm a, they say I'm a maniac. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think I'm very, I'm not this chill guy. Everybody look at me and be like, this the Jerry you sneak? Yeah, this is me. This is who I am. But on the field, I'm a totally different guy. Where's, wow. where's that come from? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just the passion I have for the game. And, you know, I just love being on that field. It's like my promised land. When I went back and looked at the notes about Legereus Need coming out of Louisiana Tech, I had you listed as a safety. Definitely. Based on what the, the different services were saying. It wasn't my idea. It was coming from other people. Mm -hmm. Do you, did you know you were going to have a chance to play corner when you got to the Kansas City Chiefs, or did you too think you were going to be a safety? Uh, I thought I was going there as safety, you know, but I knew I had the chance to play corner as well for the position who was already there. So I knew, like, okay, I'm not going to beat them guys. So. You're not going to beat Tyron Matthews. No, I'm not. You All know, right. So, not coming in as a rookie, you know. He's a big guy. Well, yeah, up. and he's another Louisiana guy. Right, right. You had a chance to play with him. Mm -hmm. He's another guy who switch flips when he goes on the field. Definitely. How did Tyron Matthew influence LeJerry Smith? Oh, man, he, he, ever since I stepped the field on that, you know, in that facility, I say, uh, Tyron told me, I got you. You know, your hands, I, you in my hands, you know, I'm going to show you the way. And he showed me the way ever since I've been in, you know, with him as a teammate. Wow. In terms of skill sets, what do you think sets you apart from other guys on the field beyond that passion? Uh, I say I uh, put hands on. You know, regular guys, they don't put hands on guys no more. And that's, that's like an old school type play. And uh, that's, 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 that's what I do, you know. And uh, I just put hands on guys. And they don't like that. Wide receivers do not like, you know, corners putting hands on them. Slow the timer down. Well, when Rand Carthon, the Titans general manager, was talking about you, he said that one of the things that stands out to everybody is your aggressiveness Definitely. and just how much you seem to really like contact. Right, right. And do you think that's an accurate way of describing yeah, you? Yeah, I definitely love contact. I'm not going to back down for it. Uh, he can be 400 pounds. I'm still going to go up. I got film me knocking down some 300 pound men. Yeah, I got film. <laughs> and if it's on film, it happens. It happens. You know it happens. It happens. I love so it. let me ask you too about your high school experience in Minden, Louisiana. 
there were people who thought when you went to college, you were going to be a wide receiver. Definitely. You're almost the inverse of DeAndre Hopkins because DeAndre was a great corner coming out of high school, goes to Clemson, becomes a wide receiver. That's crazy. Do you take the wide receiver skills with you in what you do as a defensive back, especially the fact that you're one of the few corners in the league who is always turning and looking for the ball? Right. So I could say, um, no. Coming out of high school, as being a wide receiver, it slowed the game down for me at corner because I know what you're looking for. You line up certain splits, tell me what you're going to run. So that really just helped me out tremendously because I know what you're fit to run. And if you're way out here, I know you're going to come inside, so I'm going to be patient and sit there. So everything mental. Where have you improved the most in your four years in the league after coming out of Louisiana Tech? Uh, I say mentally. You know, my mental is, is very where I need it to be. I still have a lot more growing to do, you know, still learning, I'm still growing. Is that what makes you appear so instinctual? It feels like you always know where the ball is on the field at all times. It doesn't even look like you're working on it. You yeah. just seem to find the ball. Um, is that that mental part of the game? Is that Definitely. The that, 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 that's what slowed the game down for me, you know, mentally as in studying film. Know, watching them guys throughout the week. So I know what's going to come in. I know what's coming. They're not going to change the game plan that they had. You know, probably change a little wrinkles here and there. But, you know, I know what's coming. In. Yes, mentally, slow down a lot. You watch Legereus Sneed highlights? If, if I watched your whole highlights package, which I did this morning, <laughs> you have as many highlights as a blitzer as you do as a guy intercepting passes. Definitely. What? What gives you the ability to be such an effective blitzer from the corner position? Uh, I say uh, my speed. Hmm. You know how fast four, I am. Four three seven. Yes, a four three Ooh. seven. Yeah, I hit that man. I hit that corner. You know the linemen, they're not gonna catch me off that corner. And that's what I love it. You know, it's fast. He was dialing them up. That would seem like that's something that maybe came from Tyron Matthew too, who's a, another He's, great. He definitely because a lot of it is timing, right? Exactly. Yes, sir. So how did how did you learn that part of it? Uh, just disguise, you know, so that you're not coming. And Tyron showed me that, you know, play like you're not coming and just go. And once you realize, the lineman realize you're coming, it'd be too late then. Do you think, there's certain angles you got to take too. Do you think it's fair to say that your signature play is the f forced fumble in the AFC Championship game near the goal line with Zay Flowers? <sighs> yes. Okay. So I, I have this football. Yes. And I, here's what I want to know. So I want you to demonstrate. Yes, sir, I got you. Okay, so I'm Zay Flowers. I'm getting ready to score, and here comes Legereus Sneed. As I see the ball coming, as I see him like this at first. He's like, he's like this, and, and see, then he goes out, and so he's, he's going to stretch it. And what's I see us when I do Go ahead. Oh, yes. Just it's very wow. lifelike. That was quite the reenactment. Uh, that was quite the reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> that but was good. It, it was, I, I mean, it was just such a heads-up play. It was, yes, sir. Something you're going to be proud of the rest of your life. For the rest of my life, man. My kid's going to go back and watch that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's my dad, yeah. Well, but in that moment, you're going to make a tackle. Are you aware of the ball? Are you trying to hit the ball? Yes. Or are you trying to make the tackle? I was, trying to, I was going for the tackle at first because I knew he had a leverage step, a couple of steps on me. So I had a good angle on him. And as I'm running, I just, just catch up in my mind, catch up with him, catch up with him and tackle him. So as I see him finish stretch out, that's when just an instinct, ah, punch the ball. We work on that every day, though. Every day of practice, we work on that. DBs, we punching the ball out every practice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just showed up in the game. It was muscle memory. Definitely. It's well, you, that instinct. But you make big plays. You're I one do. of the best big play defenders in the NFL. I work on those in practice, too. And so you're prepared for those moments. Definitely. But you just also make those things happen, too. I mean, some Definitely. guys got it and some guys don't, don't right? Yeah, I agree. I yeah. Agree. And that's your blessing. Yes, it is. And so, you know, he was drafted late fourth round. Mm -hmm. And I looked up how much money you made your first four years in the yeah. league. You're, you're getting a signing bonus. Yeah. It's going to be deposited into your account. It's going to be almost double what you made playing your first four, four years, years in the league. So to sign your name, <laughs> you're being paid almost double. Out of four years. Out of four paid. years of, of great play. What does that mean to you in terms of 
the accomplishment as a player and as a person? Oh, man, it's, I first want to say thank God for it because he's the one who put me in this position. You know, it's his will that I'm here today right now. You know, just a blessing, you know, to where you have me at to take care of my family, you know, to put my family in the right position, you know, and to break generation curses. And I feel that's my calling, what God got me doing, to break the curses of my family. And I'm just thankful to be here. You know, I'm just, I'm just living in the moment. You know? All right, LeJarius, I got to test Amy here. Yeah. How many corners do you think were taken ahead of LeJarius Sneed in the 2020 NFL Draft? Oh, gosh. What would you guess? Because he was picked 138. Do you know the answer to this? No, sir, I do okay. not. I don't know the answer. The answer is 15. Whoa. Now, there are a couple who've certainly had good career. Diggs has had a good career. Right. Jalen Johnson in Chicago has had a good mm -hmm. career. A couple others have done well, but I mean, nobody on that list has surpassed you. True. I mean, it doesn't sound like you care much about that, like it's a yeah. motivation. Uh, I, I, I don't care about it, honestly, you know. It just, I was the underdog and, you know, I just took that to the heart that I was the underdog and I knew I had work to do. And, but now just you're put one, the work in. But now you're one of the most respected guys in the league. Yeah. You're one of, you're an elite. Right, and I put the work in to do that. Yeah. That's what it costs, the work. Why do you love the game? Oh man, you know, the game loved me. And the game taught me a lot. The game changed my life. The game put me, you know, in positions that I never thought I'd be. And I thank God for putting me in the game and blessing the game. Good stuff. Okay. Yes, Is it five questions? Sir? Five questions. Five Hit questions. it, Mike Key. Okay, these are five bonus questions let's go in the hot seat five questions where you give quick answers yes sir so here we go you and cheeto awuze will be good together as a cornerback duo because because man we're aggressive and we're gonna put hands on guys you've been referred to in different ways by family friends and teammates what do you prefer to be called uh ljs LJS. Yes. Tell the Titans fans. They got it. The L -J -S. OT people know. LJS. I like it. That's good stuff. When Will Levis was here with us, he told us his hidden talent is singing. What is LJS's singing. hidden talent? Singing. You can really? sing as well? Yes. We will gonna, make you. You're I not going to demonstrate for us, are you? Uh, I got a song I can demonstrate for y'all. Okay, go ahead. Uh -uh. In my life, I can't get right. Trying to figure out what to do. Running in the streets all day and night, acting like a fool. Woo! Wow. <laughs> you well are done. Kidding. And you're in Nashville, too. Yeah. I mean, you may this be able to great. pick up some extra work on the side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, question four. Topic that you like to harass Patrick Mahomes about? Uh, his walk. Really? <laughs> yes. Why do you give him the business about his because walk? Because he walked pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, thank you. Uh, question number five, have you met Taylor Swift? Uh, I shook her hand. Shook, shook her hand. hand once, yeah. And what was your thought? Uh, just Taylor, yeah. Nice person. Nice person, there nice to meet her. Okay, bonus question. Why is barbecue from Tennessee better than barbecue from Kansas City? I can't answer that because I haven't had any Tennessee barbecue yet. Well, we're going to get you straight. Oh, we're going to get it's you straight. Time. I heard about it. We're going to get you straight. I heard yep. about it. Yeah, we, it's on. It's on. Mm -hmm. I like Kansas City for their burnt ends. They got well, some good And they are, they are outstanding. Ends, Guess yeah. what? It's better here. It's better. It's better here. Hey, it's would you sign true. this ball for me? Yes, sir. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, look, I just so happen to have a pen. How Tighten convenient. up and then give me this. How convenient. Yeah, it, it is. We're a little excited to have you here. Can yes, you tell? Sir. Yes, sir. I'm right, excited so, to be here. Right here. A, yeah, right there, please. Look at this. He can sing. He can <laughs> sign. The man does he it all. He wants to be LJS. He answers the questions except for the barbecue one. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you all. LJS. LJS. Jerry Sneed, yes, we're so glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us on the OTP. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. If you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot more this season, whether you're this coming season, actually. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans fans can fan. So you've now 
I moved. moved. Conveniently moved chairs well, you as know, we continue. I felt like we needed to adjust the feng shui a little bit. Yes, so. we did. Here we go. What about the Legarius Sneed number 38 autograph football? Um, how about the fact that LJS is a really hardcore nickname? It's I really like it. I'm all about initials, and I know you like a good I like an acronym. You love The kids an love an acronym. Too. I don't know if the kids do, but you do. But I love LJS as a nickname. Well, and I mean... He is some player, too. Yeah. The, I'm, and you think about Cheeto Awuze, Roger McCrary, and LJS, and all of a sudden you've got three guys. Because, listen, McCrary's a good player, and McCrary can play on the outside, but what he's really made to do is play on the inside. And so Awuze will hit you, McCrary will hit you, Sneed will hit you, and so you kind of get the best of, of all worlds right there with a Monty Hooker and whomever is going to play safety. And, I mean, l listen, that's a starting position. You're in five defensive backs, two-thirds to three-quarters of the snaps now anyway. Yeah. So, I mean. It gives you a lot of options, and it gives you a lot of power. Mm -hmm. It's very aggressive back there, which is exciting for the Tennessee The Titans. biggest winner in all of it may be Hooker. Yeah. Yeah. Because – he may be able to make more plays while offenses are having to deal with these other guys. He may be able to slip in there and use that athleticism to make big things happen. I'm ready for training camp so we can get these guys on the well, they're, field. But, but they're back go. next week. I know, Phase I know. one, They'll which is building. just the running around thing. Mm -hmm. They do, because the Titans have a new coach, they do get to have a voluntary mini camp. April 22 through 24. So we will get to see them do a few things at the start of phase two. And then you really start to get into the OTAs in May. The mini camp is June 4 through 6. Yep. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to, we're rolling really until the end of the off season program, which comes roughly June the 13th. So it's going to be a fun two months. Yep. We're getting, we're getting back to things that feel like football, which is really exciting. We haven't had a chance to talk since owner's meetings. We haven't. And a lot happened at owner's meetings. Yeah, a lot happened. And a big victory for Mike Keith came from owner's meetings. Can we talk about this a little bit? Sure. Okay. So a lot of things happened at over owner's meetings. There's a lot of conversations. And one of the biggest things that happened is the competition committee gets together and they vote on new rules for the 2024 season. And they made a change that Mike Keith has been campaigning for. <sighs> and that is changes to the kickoff rule. Mike Keith, please explain what decision was made and why you think this is such a great thing for the sport of football. Mike Keith, 2024. Oh, my God. I got it. I got it done. As soon as I saw. I, oh. I didn't, but I just, the kickoff, when they moved the kickoff to the 35-yard line, it became like part of a skills competition because you got these specialized athletes who are fantastic, and what they do is they just kick the ball out of the end zone. Right. Every single time. And it was a in what was a great Super Bowl, it was an incredible downer to watch two really good kickers mm -hmm. just whack it out of the end zone every single time. You have 10 guys on one side, you know, go running down, sort of, and do nothing. You have 10 guys on the other side, drop back and do nothing. And then you have return guy, stick his arms out and let the ball go. It's not a football play. And what they've done is they have put in a football play where the kicker will be at the 35. The offensive and defensive players will line up 10 yards apart. They can't move until the player catches the kickoff. And if he kicks it into the end zone for a touchback, it now comes out to the 30, which does make it more of a strategic play based on the fact that your odds of starting at the 25 and your odds of starting at the 30 are significantly different in terms of your chances of scoring. The five yards makes a difference in terms of the analytics of it. And otherwise, you're going to kick it inside the 20 and you're going to have a real return possibility. And from a safety standpoint, 
you don't have guys running full speed, 40 yards, and, and having those collisions. And so I, I get the safety part of it. My thing was either change it to something where the return is back in the game with some safety allowances or get rid of the kickoff altogether. We just come out of commercial and the, and the other team starts at the 25. And I think they found a really good option because you, you have a football play again. And this is really part of what the game has been for all 155 years it's been in existence, it has constantly evolved. Some people are calling this a gimmick play, but I mean, when they went to two platoon football, they called it gimmick at the, oh, now you've got a bunch of specialists. And when the passing rules became more liberalized, oh, you've got this. The game has always evolved. This gets a return back in the game in the safest way possible, the, some people are saying, well, what about the onside kick? Because now you have to say, we're going to onside kick. So the surprise onside kick is out of the game. And, but th- those weren't working anyway. Well, and how often and, does that actually happen? Well, not, not often. And it is the most dangerous play in the game. Yeah. And so it's still available late in games for a two-score game to still be something that you want to keep people interested in. Because you got a four, at the four-minute mark, you got a two-score game. You don't want people to turn it off. You want it to be, well, we've got it to a one-score game. Now we've got a chance to get the ball back. And I do think they'll eventually put in the fourth and 15 play once they see how this kickoff works, because I think it's going to work great. Yeah. I think it's going to be fun. I think somebody's going to bust a kickoff in week one. I think somebody's going to make a great play covering a kickoff. Uh, you're, going to get a, you're going to get a big hit on a kickoff that forces a fumble and the other team's going to recover. That's football. And I believe in the safety thing. I mean, all jokes and being right about this aside, I, I believe in the safety part of it. I get that the kickoff was the most dangerous play in the game, but – they went too far, in my opinion, with how they set up the rules to go with safety over making it a non-play anymore. Now, I think they have come up with the safety because the players being 10 yards apart on the, on the two lines, and you have the element back in the game of the return. So for the people who would say, oh, we love the kickoff, we love the kind of the nostalgia of it. I mean, it is a football moment. It's tradition. That is the thing. It still exists. It's still there. So was not having electricity. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, there are lots of things that were in the past. I mean, there's a fine line between tradition and just being way out of step. Yeah. And th- that's not tradition. Yeah. The ki- somebody returning a kickoff is tradition. And now they have set it up in a way that the real part of the tradition is back. I want to see a guy return a kickoff. I I like that. Um, I don't want to see six foot five inch kickers who that's all they do and that's all they've done since they were 10 years old and they have the ability to kick it 80 yards. I mean, what, why? You know, (laughs) what, what is that? So you're wasting everybody's time with something that is no longer a football play. It was just a demonstration. That's what it had become. So yeah, I'm happy about that. And now the NFL has has come around. It. They've adjusted it. Well, I put out a video on Twitter that went crazy. Well, and and I mean, I just I compared it to the jump ball in basketball and the change in basketball. Mm-hmm. And if, if Back in my day, oh, no. um, it used to be in every help ball situation, you had a jump ball. And that wasn't too bad if it was two or three times a game. But watch a basketball game where it happens 12 times. Oh, gosh. You would rather be, I mean, so boring. Watch a 6-1 guy have to jump with a 7-2 guy. I mean, so dull. The, the arrow for the help ball situation improved the game. You have a jump ball to start the game, and then after that, you have the arrow. Um, and it cuts out the possibility of six to ten hell ball situations in a game. 
This is the same premise, in, in my opinion. And, you know, that's what I was comparing it to. Yeah, did I celebrate? Yes, I did. Did I celebrate on the Twitter <laughs> machine? I did. You took the victory lap. You I did. deserve it. I, I took the victory lap and, and celebrated. I also like the, the third challenge. If you win a challenge, you get a third challenge. I think it's a good rule. Yeah. It, I mean, it gives people the opportunity to, I mean, continue to have those moments and flag things if there's a problem. And, 50, I mean, if you get it right, yeah. For 56 minutes of the game. Yeah. Uh, having the sky judge, so to speak, be the official in the booth be able to make decisions about grounding, I think, is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I think about the hip drop tackle thing. I think, I think that is one, in my opinion, that we're going to have to see how it plays out in the season. I mean, we're going to have to see what that actually looks like when we start to get into live play because there's so many things about it that are conceptual, it feels like to me. Like, we talk a lot about different things and about different just ways that they're going to be watching that and officiating that. I, I'm going to have to see it in in live play. I have seen all the, the demonstration plays of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm still not sure with how they teach tackling today down to really the middle school level because in, in grass cutter, you're not – sort of strong enough to do the things that you're going to do. But I mean, you're in seventh or eighth grade, you can learn how to properly tackle. And this is what they're teaching now. They're teaching, we were taught to, to use our head through the arm. Uh, we, we were taught the safe thing is keep your head up and see what you hit. Mm -hmm. Now they're teaching the head to the side. Mm -hmm. um, the rugby tackle is part of it. And so my question is, with how they teach tackling in those moments, how are you going to be able as a defender to avoid doing that? Yeah. And that's what we're going to have to see. I mean, Legereus Sneed said in his press conference today, I'm, I'm just going to get him down. And, and he was really not happy about it. Yeah. And, and he said, uh, and the Players Association is not thrilled about it. Because it's, I don't know how with tackling taught as it is in the moment that the defender is going to be able to avoid doing that. And I, I think there's going to have to be some grace, maybe. I think there's I going to have to be... I don't think there's going to be any, though, Amy. I don't, I, it, it seems like, to your point, what gives everybody hesitation is it seems like it's very rigid and it's very much, how is somebody going to not do this? You know, exactly what you well, were just saying, but... Uh, that's why I think there's going to have to be, uh, it feels like it's going to have to be on a case-by-case -case basis, which also really doesn't make sense. It feels, uh, I don't know. It doesn't work. It feels like I can't figure it out. I mean, out. because there's, a, there's virtually, unless a guy goes out of bounds, there's a tackle on every play. Yeah. And so now the officials who already have the difficulty in making certain calls are going to have to, in real time, decide, oh, yeah, that was an illegal tackle. Yeah. I mean, the horse collar thing is much easier. Well, but, but let me just real quick. Mm -hmm. And they still miss that. They, when they see a guy get jerked a certain way, they assume this is what has happened. And then in certain instances, they don't call it when it is that. And that's real obvious. This is much more subtle, in my opinion, and it's like, uh, and so what's going to happen in the preseason is they're going to do what they always do, what they should do, frankly. They're going to call anything like that they see because they use preseason as the teaching for the officials and the players. But, I mean, I don't know. I, in theory, I think it's great. Safety. Sure. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm 100% for safety. And yet... In, in the real moment, when you've got a talented running back or receiver or tight end in space and he's running and you're just doing whatever you can to get him down, ooh. Well, and is this going to slow the game down? Yes. And which is the whole thing that the league has been for the last – five years trying to speed the game up. Now we're going to slow it back down because on every play, you're going to be throwing a flag. 
picking it up, throwing a flag, well, throwing a thing, throwing a flag. I mean, thing. I hope it's not, I think your point is right. Yeah. I hope it's not to that level, but I think you are going to have situations where it's called and then somebody, another official comes in and says that wasn't, that wasn't it. Yeah. And then I think you're going to have other situations where the coaches are going to want to say, you missed it. I think they're going to be they're going to be discussions around those plays. So We're I think to talk a lot more. I think your point, Amy, is is spot on. I think you have made the point of this OTP, and that is, it's going to potentially slow the game down too. Well, and we've said this multiple times on the OTP, but at some point the league has to pick a direction. You're either all in on safety or you're all in on speeding the game up. And sometimes the two things, while they can, obviously you want to have a safe game and you want it to be entertaining mm -hmm. and as efficient as possible. At some point you have to pick a side that you're on because there are some things that can't go, but you can't go over the top on safety and also have a game that's under three hours. Well, or it, it, they seem to be conflicting masters a little well, bit. Well, it is because, I mean, the other part of it too, Amy, is it's a tackle game. It is. We play. It is. We it's play an aggressive, tackle, violent game. We play tackle football. Yeah, we do. And hardcore. Yeah, I mean the best tackle football in the world. Yes. And so, how do you mesh the two together? Yeah, because, it's a it's a tricky dance. It's and a, it's another point where the defense is taking another potential hit. I mean, the game has swung very much to the offense. We know that. The game has swung very much to the pass game. We know that. And now this is another thing. And, it, you know, it, it occurs a lot in space after, guess what, pass receptions. Mm -hmm. it, it probably won't happen as much on running plays as it will on passing plays. Yeah. But certainly won't. Yeah. And so how do you, how do you play defense? We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. Do you have anything else that you would like to discuss on this edition of the OTP? Well, Mike, that was kind of the main thing, except I feel like we need to shout out your social media presence a little bit. Oh, oh thanks. No, uh, well, because, I mean, really, you have gone above and beyond in How? all things. I mean, you've done a great job. Well, thank you. You've You're been very, very consistent. The stuff that you put on the social medias is compelling. You're on Twitter. You're on Instagram. People share your stuff. Do they? They like it. Yeah. They comment on it. The numbers pop up right on the screen, Mike. I don't know if you know that. But I did. Yeah, they're right there. You I'm learning exactly. how to respond in some ways. To I the didn't, people? Well, I didn't know how that worked at first. Like a reply? Well, but not just like, I mean, you know, like some things. Well. I've, I mean, I have a lot to learn. But I think I have been impressed by how well received you have been. People are very excited about the Why stuff would you you're say putting that? out there? I mean, I'm a likable guy. How yeah. well I've been received. Like, if this wasn't going to work out. No, but it's, people don't get the following right away that you have gotten. I mean, it took years. People follow you just quickly because they like the stuff you're putting out. You I'm trying to say nice things, Mike. With two ends? Yeah. At 10 voice with two ends? You're doing such a good job. Put it up on the screen, at 10 voice. Oh, my God. I wonder what at 10 voice with one end is. I don't know. We probably don't need to find probably out. Probably don't need to find out. But. but, no, you've really been putting up a lot of good content. I think you're a great follow. Well, thank you. And I'm very impressed by it. Have you been surprised by the reception that you have received? Yes. Really? Yes. See, I didn't say anything mean because you too have been surprised. Well, my whole thing with social media is I wanted to do it in a way that hopefully would add to Titans fans' enjoyment of following the team. Okay. And, uh, and, and I mean, what led me to do it is I, I met someone in a parking lot uh, who was very kind, and he said you get to do a lot of really cool stuff. And I said, I, I really do. It's a, it's a great job. I love it. I love it every day. I love it just as, as much as when I started it. Never thought I would get to do these sorts of things, just as a sports fan, let alone as a broadcaster. And he said, uh, you know, it would be great if you shared that on social media. And man, did I feel like I was two inches tall. I mean, he made me feel bad. Why? Well, I mean, it felt like... It, it felt like something that I should do, 
mm -hmm. and that I was not doing. And my, my whole thing about not being on social media for years came down to the fact that I didn't want to be one of those people telling you what to do or mm -hmm. what to, I mean, you know, it's like, I don't need that. Yeah. I, I don't need to be that. There's enough of that out there. Super, you know, if you've got all the answers to the universe, good for you. I don't. <laughs> the older I get, the more I know nothing. Yeah. I mean, you, the older you get, you really understand you're completely clueless. When yeah. you're young, you think you know everything. Right. I did, mm -hmm. which was not great. And I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be that version of myself on social media. And so, you know, I just try to show people some stuff and tell tell some stories that we don't have a chance to tell other places. And I, I've really enjoyed it. People have been overwhelmingly kind. And not that I didn't expect them to, but I just, I didn't know what to expect. I think people get to see fun Mikey. They get to see cool, casual Mikey. It's a whole different side I, I don't of think that's true. I think that's totally true. I mean, what are you talking about? I think, uh, like, okay, so for example, the backwards hat thing. You were wearing a backwards hat and oh, people in the lost their video? minds. Yeah. Yeah. But see, I'm allowed to do the backwards hat thing because I qualify under the male backwards hat rule. Okay, none of that is real. It's 100% real. What are you talking about? So the only men, I can't speak for women, but the only men who are supposed to wear backwards hats are men who played catcher in the sport of baseball, men under 30, uh, guys who either played or coached O-line or D-line, former professional athletes in any sport, anyone who was any sort of real skateboarder, or anyone famous who has worn a hat backwards as part of their persona as they have come up. Otherwise, as a guy, if you don't fit into any of those categories, I'm not going to judge you. Okay, I'm not going to judge you, but teenagers will. And, and it's not going to be good for you. So I'm just is, telling you. Is, are these rules crafted by teenagers? No. Or are these posted somewhere? They're posted. Oh. But I was a catcher for the majority of my baseball career, so I have the right to wear a backwards hat anytime I want to. In perpetuity. In perpetuity. Be 85 years old, no pop pop be coming in with his backwards hat. <laughs> I'm serious. I had no idea that these rules existed. Yeah. If you don't fall into any of those categories, you don't need to be wearing a backwards hat. Does everybody know about these rules? They're totally- Literally every person in this room is shaking their head no. So I'm not alone. Well, but first of all- He doesn't make the two rules. Two females and two guys under 30. <laughs> so they wouldn't know. Oh, so they wouldn't know. They, there's no need for rules. Because I'm not talking about females. I don't know what y'all do with backwards hats. That's y'all's business. Uh, I'm not know. familiar with that. No, same. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I know. don't know. Not but yes, I, if I have a hat on, the majority of the time, it's on backwards. Interesting. But that, it's not fun. I mean, that's just who I am. I'm a backwards hat guy. And this has nothing to do with sun on your Ask neck. Ask any dude who played baseball, and they will tell you, anybody who was a catcher has the right to wear a backwards hat the rest of their life. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know these rules exist. They do. You come to the OTP for a little bit of Titans, and Learn. you stay for things like that. You know? I mean, I, I just, that's how it is. Other, if, you're, if you don't fall into that, that's your own business. Okay. Well, what else do we need to learn today, Mike? What we need to learn is, uh, how about my luxurious Sneed autograph football? It's very nice. I don't think I can keep it, though. You going to give it away? I think we're going to give it away. To who? Maybe through social media. What about that, Ashley? I like it. Ashley well, says yes. Mike Keith, you are on the socials. Give it away. Yeah, we'll give it away on social media. At 10 Voice with two N's. Not one N, because we don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're afraid. We're afraid of what that might be. <laughs> this is a game bowl, too. It's got the little Titan thing here, and he signed it in the sharp pen. And I it looks nice. It looks you nice. want that. So at 10 voice. And what a cool guy, too. Yeah. All these dudes we're meeting, and, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, not every football player who's successful is a cool He's guy. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But this guy's been really good guys. This has been a they're very gonna, strong free agency in terms right. of personality. And they're going to fit well here. And I think Titans fans are going to enjoy getting to know them. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for the Tennessee Titans. I'm excited for all of the things that we're going to have on the field. I'm more excited for us. 
<laughs> because when it comes to personality and guys who are engaging, guys with good stories, guys who you actually want to talk to and get to know, that's what we have here right now. And I'm really excited about that for me. And I'm really excited about that for you. For old Pop Pop. And also, I think that we might win some football games. And that's exciting yeah, that's for really, everybody. That's really all we care about. I mean, if they're, it's great if they're great, but let's win. Let's win let's win some. Let's win some ball games. And then do a killer interview after. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You done? I'm so done. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for the OTP. Where the legends go, everybody knows it's I.